Eight, the Honourable Member for Calgary, Midnapore. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Unfortunately, my headset isn't working, so I will be working without my headset. I am happy to be here in the House, even if it's virtual. Even if all of this is virtual, I'm very pleased to have the transport file as the shadow minister for the official opposition. The transport file has an incredible history here in Canada. It was the Honourable James Moore who said that transport Transportation is the only file that is in the Canadian Constitution, which is quite something when you think about it. Uh, Madam President, because uh, it is the railroad actually that was in the Constitution, and so really transport is just an incredible part of Canadian history. As well, Madam President, I'll add that it is incredible the individuals who have held this portfolio, both as the minister as well as the critic. John Baird, Lisa Ray. The Honourable John Baird, the Honourable Lisa Ray. James Moore, comme j'ai déjà dit. And the Honourable James Moore, as I said, and others. I am a woman of the West, sharing this file with these people is very special. Also, uh, Madam Speaker. I think when Canadians think of transport, they have beautiful visions, I know I do, of um, grain rolling across the prairies uh, in rail cars, as well as, of course, uh, my favourite commodity, oil. So that really is a beautiful picture that Canadians do have. Aussi, Madame Président, je me souviens. Madam Speaker, I remember the day where well, I went to the United States of America. P uh, rail car or a CN rail car. Et tout à coup, je suis chez moi. And all of a sudden, I feel home. I feel like I'm in Canada when I see that. And finally, Madam Speaker. As a, as a young girl, uh, lying in my bed at night, falling asleep in my house in Lake Bonavista, with the rails uh, just a kilometer away from my home, and listening to the sounds of the train going across the tracks, and the sound of the horn. So you see, Madame le Président, transport has an incredible history here in Canada, but as well for myself personally. And I think that's because, Madame President, because really, when you think of transport, le transport, c'est la unité. Transport is unity. Transport is the actual physical network that ties Canadians together all across this incredible country of ours. Transport brings people together. There is not a single Canadian who cannot think of the joy of going to the airport and seeing a, a longtime friend or relative that you have not seen in a long time. Transport allows people to have food on their table because of all the commodities, commodities that are carried all across this great nation. That is the reason for which I was sorely disappointed yesterday with the speech from the throne. Disappointing, Madam Speaker, because yesterday's speech was not about unity. It had nothing to do with unity, not at all. Actually, Madam Speaker, it has never been about unity with this government. Because for five long years now, Madam Speaker, we have seen region pitted against region. Province contre province. Province against province, sector against sector. Fortunately as well, Madam Speaker, we have seen scandal after scandal a refusal to recognize the crisis of the pandemic that was on the horizon. We tried so hard as the official opposition to bring this to the attention of the government, to show them the doom that was ahead for Canadians, for our well-being and for our economy, but they refused to listen. And now, Madam Speaker, the incompetence of this government to get us out of this slump, to get us on the path to economic recovery, to take us to a better place. In the words of the leader of the official opposition, Canada has never been more divided. Madam Speaker, in this file of transport, I see tens of thousands of people without work. P 
people who contact me who are desperate, people from the airline sector that are barely hanging on as a result of this government's inability to develop a plan for safe skies or obtain access to rapid testing that so many other nations across the globe have managed to obtain at this time. At my own YYC Airport Authority, Madam Speaker, we have seen a loss of 20,000 jobs. I hear from people all across the country, people who write me, people like Michael who write, I am an airline pilot and I've been laid off since March. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for standing up for our industry within Parliament. From people like Shanna in Manitoba who write me, I don't need a reply, but I just wanted to let you know, thank you for your letter to Parliament. It seems our present government is giving away the farm, so to speak, and forgets about transportation and how we are going to recover. But then again, what do I know? I'm just a furloughed flight attendant who is volunteering in schools to help make this transition as smooth as possible in my community. J'entends des personnes comme fait. Philippe, for example, he wrote, he wrote to me. The absence of a plan regarding airlines. You seem to be one of the rare persons who understands the plague of the aviation sector. The federal government is currently squandering away decades of work by thousands of talented people. If they don't want to throw money at the aviation sector, at least allow us the conditions to do our jobs. People who are worried about food not making it to the table. People like Chad from the transport industry who write me, please help. Freight capacity is a real problem. The government is even facing it with personal protective equipment. The government needs a plan to help transition supply chains to the new reality. Madam Speaker, I hear from people who are so tired of this government choosing winners and choosing losers and being on the losing end of that equation. I hear from people like energy workers in my riding, like John and Linda, who have lost not only their truck, but now their home because of this government's abandoning of the West for six weeks, Madam Speaker, Canadians went without Parliament. We went without committees. Canadians were without a voice. Et pourquoi? For an empty plan, void of a plan for economic recovery, and no hope for families across the nation who so desperately need hope at this time. Madam Speaker, this is not unity. Unity is not your turning your back on an entire region of Canada. Unity is not leaving thousands of people without work to lose their homes and their dignity. Unity is not omitting an entire section sector from the speech from the throne, one that is so desperately needed in the restart of this economy. Madam Speaker, this is not unity at all. Ce n'est pas la unité. But, Madam Speaker, I will tell you what unity is. Unity is the Rocky Mountaineer chugging through the majestic mountains. Unity is the first glimpse of Lake Ontario on Via Rail from Ottawa to Toronto. L'unité, c'est la peinture. Unity is PEI, a PEI to the West. Looking out over Vancouver Port at Canada Place in Vancouver, British Columbia. Unity is the good people of Windsor West that I talked to last night. Unity is using the words such as oil, gas, and pipelines in the speech from the throne. Madam Speaker, would you like to know how committed my leader is to unity? He is so committed that he went to La Belle Provence, La Provence de Quebec, and had a conversation with the Premier to discuss solutions to unity. He left the front steps of his house. He had the courage to do that, forsaking his health and the health of his family. And this is the courage and the leadership that we need at this time, Madam Speaker. And c'est la raison pour laquelle so proud to stand behind and beside our leader, Madam Speaker, to get our people, to get our goods moving again, Madam Speaker. 
because that is the only way that we are going to come out of the pandemic is together and together with unity. Parce que le transport, c'est la unité. Transport is unity. Transport is unity. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Government House Leader. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. You know, unity uh, for me is a government that uh, understands and appreciates the diversity of our nation and the many different regions in our nation and works to be able to better the lives of all. A good example of unity for me, uh, Madam Speaker, is that when we hit the pandemic, from nothing, we created a program called SIR. And through that program, over 8 million, close to 9 million Canadians were served. That's with a population base of 37 million. That's a government that understands the reality and the importance, not only of unity, but being there in a real, tangible way for Canadians. That is but one way to demonstrate the importance of unity that this government was very clear on. And would the member not agree that it didn't matter where you lived in the country, in our beautiful country, that that program was there to serve Canadians first and foremost at a time in which it was needed? The Honourable Member for Calgary, Minnapur. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and thank you very much to my Honourable colleague for that question. Unity is the constant recognition of all Canadians from all regions, all across the country. This is something that we have not seen in five years, as my home in the West has been completely ignored, as well as thousands of other Canadians. And it is never more important than right now that this economy fire on all cylinders, with all hands on deck, with all Canadians being united for the future of this great nation. And this is not something that we saw in, in the speech in yesterday. This government was slow to react, to respond. We've seen, we've discussed this over and over again in the, in the House of Commons, in closing our borders, in, in allowing people to suffer, in giving away personal protective equipment. Now, the very least that they can do is include all Canadians in the solution. And they're not doing that, Madam Speaker. Questions et commentaires? Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières. The Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières. One moment, please. I recognize, I'm recognizing someone who's online. Sorry, this is a new system. The Honourable Member, member for Trois-Rivières. Can you hear me now? Yes? I would like to take this opportunity to say hi to all of my colleagues who are here and who held firm throughout the pandemic and who have gone above and beyond for their constituents. Now, the member talked of transportation and transit in Trois-Rivières, we don't have rail service. We're waiting for the high-speed train, which was had been promised by Mr. Trudeau's government uh, for many years now. And I would be extremely happy to know whether my colleague would support uh, rail service through that region. I'd like to remind the member that she is not allowed to name a member who's in the House. She mentioned the name of the Prime Minister, and I hope that the next time she will use the uh, title and not the name of the person in question. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you to my colleague. Yes, this is another example of a project which has been for gotten by the Prime Minister. In fact, this is the exact reason why my leader, the leader of the official opposition, went to Quebec to have a conversation with the Premier of Quebec and to learn about the issues and projects like the one my colleague has just mentioned. So I think that with a new government and a new leader, 
there will be more conversations about on issues and about projects which the Prime Minister has forgotten. Resuming.